Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have another very delightful problem for you guys today. Uh, this one is from the St. Petersburg Math Olympiad this year. So it was actually from the Olympiad in 2020. Um, and it's a very nice problem. So if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so now I'm gonna go over the solution. So we have a triangle ABC and BB1 is the angle bisector and I is the in center of the triangle. Um, the perpendicular bisector of AC meets the circumcircle of AIC at points D and E, and F is on segment uh, B1C so that uh, AB1 is equal to CF, and we want to show that B, D, E, and F are cyclic. All right, so how do we start? Um, well, it's clear we can start by labeling the midpoint of AC, so I'm going to call it K. Um, and then it's clear that B1 and F are symmetric across point K um, because AB1 is equal to CF from the problem statement. Um, and another thing we can note, which is in so many of my videos now, is that if BB1 is the angle bisector, then it has to pass through the midpoint of arc AC. And also uh, DK um, being the perpendicular bisector of AC also passes through the midpoint of arc AC. So I'm gonna uh, write this out. So BB1 and DK uh, both pass through the midpoint M of arc AC. And so I'm gonna label M. And as you can see, they both, um, both lines pass through point M. All right, so how do we proceed from here? So ultimately we wanna show that B, D, E, and F are cyclic. Um, and there's a couple different methods to show that a quadrilateral is cyclic. Um, one of them is power of a point, and that doesn't look too easy to apply here. Um, and then another one is to show um, inscribed angles are equal. So maybe angle BED is equal to angle DFD, but that also doesn't seem so easy. So I'm gonna use another technique and this one, I was kind of inspired by problem number 38 on my channel. Um, so if you'd like, you can check out video 38, but I discuss in that video this idea where uh, if the standard methods don't work in trying to prove a quadrilateral cyclic, sometimes what you can do is you can find a fifth point um, that would lie on the circle, and you can show that fifth point is cyclic with one group of the three points and also cyclic with a different group of three of the four points and therefore the original four points have to be cyclic. So that's the strategy I'm gonna use here. Okay, um, so what is that fifth point? Um, and so what the fifth point is actually gonna be, um, it's the point such that um, D, F, G, E is an isosceles trapezoid. Um, so this is very similar, like I said, to problem 38 on my channel. So you might say, oh, doesn't that sort of come out of nowhere? Like, how did you think to do that? Well, watch that video and you'll kind of see where I got the idea from. Um, so I'm going to draw a perpendicular uh, to AC at point F. And I'm going to let BB1 intersect it at a point. So I'm, I'm actually going to call it H. So, so H is where this perpendicular to AC uh, meets the bisector BB1. Um, and like I said, B1 and F are symmetric about DE. Um, and so it's not too hard to see from there that B1M has to equal MH. And so M is actually the uh, circumcenter of B1FH because that's a right triangle and M is the midpoint of the, of the hypotenuse. So M is the circumcenter of B1FH, okay? And then I claim that DFHE is actually an isosceles trapezoid and therefore it's cyclic. Um, so if M is the circumcenter of B1FH, then it has to lie on the perpendicular bisector of FH. Um, that's actually why I constructed the point H in the first place. Um, but if M is on the perpendicular bisector of FH, so I'm going to write that out. Um, because the center of any circle is on the, the perpendicular bisector of all three sides of the triangle. Um, and so that means uh, by symmetry, since DE is parallel to FH, 
uh, DFHE has to be an isosceles trapezoid, and all isosceles trapezoids are cyclic. Uh, that's not too hard to show. Um, I've discussed it on my channel before. Um, you can one way to see it is that the opposite angles have to add up to um, 180. Okay, so we've shown that D, F, H, and E lie in a circle, and now we want to show that B lies on that same circle. Uh, so how do we do that? And now, now that we have point H added, uh, power of a point seems like a much easier approach here because B, H, and D, E intersect at point M. So if we can show that BM times MH is DM times ME, then that would solve the problem. Okay. Um, and one thing, and I actually realized this um, right when I saw the problem initially, but there's a theorem, it's called the in-center, x-center lemma. And basically, um, it says that the points A, I, and C all lie on a circle centered at M. Um, so I'm not going to prove that here, but I think I've discussed it a few times uh, before on my channel. So basically, MA is equal to MI is equal to MC. Um, they all lie on a circle centered at M. Uh, so I'm going to write that out. Um, so this is the in-center, x-center lemma. Sometimes it's called fact five. Sometimes it's called the shooting lemma. There's a bunch of different names for it. But said another way, M has to be the circumcenter of uh, triangle AIC. Okay. So how can we use that fact to ultimately show that BM times MH is DM times ME? Um, so clearly we can see that DM and ME are two radii in the circle. Um, so I'm going to start out by calculating BM times MH. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of algebra here. So... Uh, first, note that B1M is equal to MH, and that's because M is the midpoint of the hypotenuse of um, B1FH, okay? And so that means that if we take BM times MH, it's the same as BM times B1M. So, so BM times MH uh, is, is actually BM times B1M. And now I'm going to do a little algebra here. We can take the segment BM and break it up into BB1 plus B1M. Okay. And then uh, distribute it. So we get BB1 times B1M plus B1M squared. And the whole reason why I broke it up is because uh, BB1 times B1M, we can calculate that uh, using power of a point. So BB1 times B1M, which is this guy, is AB1 times B1C. Um, so I'm going to write out a little bit more algebra. So this is what I just said. So BB1 times B1M is AB1 times B1C. But then we can think of that as being the power of B1 with respect to the uh, circle uh, through A, D, C, and E. So AB1 times B1C, that's the power of B1 with respect to this circle, the smaller one. And another way uh, to write it, so the power of a point with respect to the circle, uh, it, if it's inside the circle, it's equal to the radius of the circle squared minus the distance from that point to the center squared. So this would be equal to, so the radius of the circle squared, which would be dm squared, minus B1M squared, because B1M is the distance from B1 uh, to the center of the circle. Okay, um, and now we can take this expression and substitute it back above. Um, so if we do that, the B1M squareds will cancel, and we will get uh, BM times MH is DM squared, and DM squared is the same as DM times ME, because uh, DM is a radius of the circle. Um, so DM is equal to ME. And so therefore, if BM times MH is equal to DM times ME, uh, that's exactly what we wanted to show to show that DD, H, and E lied on a circle. Um, so we know that DD, H, E is cyclic. And then, like I mentioned before, DFH, E is cyclic because it's an isosceles trapezoid. 
And so then all five of those points have to lie in a circle. Um, and that solves the problem because that means B, D, E, F is cyclic. Uh, so I hope you all enjoy this problem. Um, it used that trick that I mentioned where um, to show that four points lie in a circle, you could pick some other fifth point, And if three of them are cyclic with that point and another three are cyclic with that same point, then that means those four have to be cyclic. So it's a little trick and it came from uh, video number 38 on my channel. Um, so if you thought this proof was kind of magic or kind of came out of nowhere, um, I would highly encourage you to watch that video. Um, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.